well, I'm not complaining about this volatility, but boy, it sure uh, takes time out of your schedule, your day. My wife's like, when are you going to get a haircut? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> when the VIX drops below 20. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me get the character. We'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Dave Landry here, and this is the week in charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. If you can't find the show, I try to remember to put up a banner right out, although today with the volatility, as I was saying pre-show, it's like it's hard to get around to doing everything. You can go to davelearner.com slash webinar to register to participate live. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, I'll have a lot to say about that. I know I say that every week, but this week I really mean it. <laughs> Your questions or trading, if you don't mind, keep them relative to the slides. And your stock picks, hang on and hang on until we get to the live charts for that. And for the crypto, put a dollar sign in front of the crypto. I doubt we'll have much to look at in crypto because crypto's in a bear market too. All right, so we're going to focus on. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the fifth day ogre. That's some new research that I think I might be on to something. And I'll show you the first trade there, a little trial position. I want to talk about the buy at B IPO pattern. And then that created the first of my next 100 trades. And that'll make sense in just a minute. And then I want to revisit route days because I think that there's something really, really awesome here. And if we could figure this out, we'll own the world. And if I figure it out before you, you'll never see my fat ass again. No, I would I would come back to taunt you a second time. There's a flame screen, as you know, you can lose money trading. I'm about to sum it up. All predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right, let's talk about the fifth day ogre. And I think this might be fodder for research. And as I'm going live here, I think day five, I think there's something magical about day five with, a, with an IPO. But as I'm going live, I'm also thinking that this might work for any potential buy it be in the works with an IPO or just ogres in general with IBOs, I think would work pretty good. But day five, I think there's something magical there. And basically we're looking to ca capture that opening gap reversal and flip it out by the end of the day or get a head start on a buy it be. So let's take a look at that. Before we do that, a couple of thoughts. Day five, buy it be is a viable IPO setup. So stay tuned. So you might want to get a a head start on getting in on a buy at B, and that's one way you can do it, play that open gap reversal. And sometimes on day five, an IPO can make a substantial move on its way to a new closing high. So if you look at some of the trades that I show with the buy at B, you'll notice that sometimes it might be 10 minutes before the close. And then one I'm going to show in a few minutes was a few minutes before the close. And a couple of things there. One, I think in the case yesterday, it was because I had a lot of other stuff going on. So what happened was I, I knew I wanted to get in this position. So I just got in close to the close. And I was actually exiting the yoga or trade in another account. I'll show you that. But I did buy this stock for a buy at B setup. And then day one so far worked out. And then it got stopped out. And I'm going to show you that in just one second. A little spoiler alert there. But on day five, one thing I've noticed is sometimes these IPOs will begin to take off and you know they're going to close at a new closing high. You have a good feeling that they will. Sometimes you can get in a little early. So that's getting in either intraday or getting in on something like an opening gap reversal. Now, in this one account where I was testing this opening gap reversal, I played it just 100 shares in and of itself to see what happened. In another account, I went ahead and took my first one of 100 trades and I put on 1,000 shares just to make it a meaningful trade. Now, remember, should an ogre occur in an uptrend, we're not catching a falling knife. We're not trying to, to buy a stock as it's dropping. We're trying to catch a little bit of a reversal, but it's a reversal back in the direction of the trend. It's, it's sort of like a pullback, except you're getting in super early when you're trading these opening gap reversals. So here is my FinViz opening scan. and I, I didn't think about doing a screenshot in the morning, but from now on, I think what I'll do is if I am going to 
take a potential ogre. I'm going to do a screenshot in the morning so you'll see what happens. But this is early this morning, which was yesterday's. It hadn't updated for today just yet. And you could see that a lot of stocks were in downtrends. Now, I call those burning dogs, and I've got that term from Linda Rasky, who had somebody in our office that called these uh, these stocks and downtrends. I think he was doing SEP futures when it's just kind of falling out of bed. He called them burning dogs. And anyway, you can see most of these things are downtrends. This one went sideways for a while, so there's no trade there. And again, downtrend, downtrend. And the only one that caught, sort of caught my eye yesterday was this SOUN. Number one, it's an IPO. Number two, it's going up. And number three, it had opened down here. So I was wondering, could this one have the potential snap back in the direction of the trend? Now, I don't think I mentioned the opening gap reversal in Facebook. And if I did, then maybe I need to count that as trade number one. But I did actually mention it, I know for a fact, as a buy B, which I'll show you in just one second. So anyway, you come in and then the stock gaps lower and then it begins to rally. Now, it's a tricky part. You're never sure exactly when to get in with these things. Sometimes they fake out on the first few bars or whatever. My favorite pattern is when they, I don't like them when they just gap and then go straight back up, although sometimes that could be best trades. Sometimes I prefer if they gap and then begin to roll over and look like they're really going to sell off hard and then come straight back. But anyway, so I bought in here, and then you can see it didn't do a whole lot at first, but it did begin to move in my favor during the day. And I didn't buy a lot, that's why I didn't take partial profits. It ended up exiting at the close. So there's the actual trade. Like I said, it was just, a, it was just kind of a trial balloon type of thing. I just did 100 shares, and it was an okay trade, $239, 2.39 part of points which is much better than a poke in the eye. And of course, you know me, I've got to annualize everything, multiply it by 252 trading days. If you did that every day, that's $60,000 extra a year. Now I know it's fuzzy math, but I point that out for two reasons. One, because you could trade at a relatively small size and if you get halfway decent at it, it could pull 200 bucks here and there. Longer term, you'll actually do pretty darn good. And provided, of course, you have a core methodology on top of all this. So this is this these are this is just extra money. Easy for me to say I'm looking to pick up. I've had coffee earlier. <laughs> Usually I don't have coffee in the afternoons anymore. But the other reason I like to to annualize is to wake you up sometimes. Let's say you lose four hundred dollars and you're like, ah, so what? Four hundred dollars on a day trade? I, I can give a flip. Well, $400 a day, that's 100K a year. So you got to be careful with that. You don't want to consistently lose $400. But if you can pick up a few hundred dollars here or there with relatively low risk, obviously, then it's worthwhile. All right. Someone had pointed out in, uh, you know, social, me social media could be such a cesspool. <laughs> and I remember years ago, there was a forum. And every time I tried to participate, it was like, they just come after you, and it's like, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to give you a pattern. Look, it, it, this is a bow tie, and the market just made a bow tie, and it's headed down. Or this is a gold stock, and it made a bow tie, and it's headed up, or energy stock, or whatever it was. And by the way, they just come after you with fangs. It's like, oh, geez, you know, I finally just gave up. And uh, some of those forum posts are actually still out there. One of you guys found some from 20-something years ago. But anyway, the good news is, before I, I'm going to digress a second here, imagine that. The good news is the Facebook group has been really good. And as I've said a thousand times, I've been involved with other groups, even professional groups, such as John Bollinger's group when he had a group for professional traders. And it becomes Lord of the Flies really, really, really quick. And so far, knock on wood, and I think it's because everybody is somewhat qualified and also has a little skin in the game by being a member, that it just makes for much better per, uh, post. And we're all, we're all, we're not trying to one up each other. We're all trying to make money. We all have a common goal, make money through trends, and we might agree to disagree. But anyway, I love the group. I love you guys. Thank you so much. So my rules, so anyway, somebody said I was uh, showing cherry picking or just showing the best stocks or whatever. And this was in my trading simplified show. Well, all I'm doing is I'm following up on the mystery charts, which come straight from my trading service, and occasionally following up on something that I might have posted and Facebook. So there's zero hindsight in all this. And so what I replied to this gentleman was, 
I'll tell you what, I'll show you my next 100 trades with zero hindsight. So here we go. So zero hindsight, it again, straight from my trading service, which are the mystery charts in my trading simplified show for stockcharts.com or something that I mentioned in the Facebook group to Dave Landry's trend traders. By the way, would love to have you in the group, but you do have to be at least a gold member, which is cheap to participate in the group. The group is free, but you have to qualify. And obviously I'm gonna show you everything warts it all. So we just got started this week. So game on. So here's the SOUN, which was mentioned in Facebook at as a buy at B. I thought I grabbed that post, but maybe I forgot. On day three, as part of the buy at B rules, you have to buy above the greater of the first day high or at or above the five day closing high, or I should say above the five day closing high. But if on day five it closes at a new high, you would actually buy on that new closing high. Now, once the high of day one, or if the high of day one gets taken out, as it did here on day three, then you don't have to worry about that day one high rule. And I know it's a really simple pattern, but I get a lot of questions on this. So basically, there's only a few rules. One, ideally, stocks less than $20, but I recently upped that to 30. I need to make that official. I will take stocks up to 30 and sometimes around $30 a share. I find the somewhat lower price IPOs within reason, once you get down to about five bucks or whatever, and eh, it's a pick and a poke once you get there. But in general, I find that stocks less than $20 tend to do well. And then stocks over $30, sometimes they get a little ahead of themselves and it's hard to make money with the buy at B pattern. There's other patterns we use for those. But anyway, new closing high, $30 or less, okay? Closing high on day five or Later, people always ask me, hey, what do you think about this IPO coming out? Hot new IPO. It's like, well, you know, call me at, call me on the afternoon of the fifth day. It comes public on, on Monday. On Friday, give me a call before the close and I'll let you know what I think. Or bring it up in Facebook, obviously. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not too good with the phone. There's a meme of, uh, I can't think of his name, the guy that hosts family. If you look at his phone, like it's like, that's me looking at my phone when somebody called me. But once you take out the day one high, or if you take out the day one high, forget about that. Just focus on the closing high. So if the high was like way up here, it would have to close above that high is what all I'm trying to say. Anyway, day four is here, as you can see. And on day five, that's when I play that opening gap reversal. And I exited in a super active trading account just to put a little money in the account and get a day trade under my belt. And then in my or another account i should say where i do a little bit more position trading stuff although i will occasionally put a intraday trade in there i went ahead and bought a thousand shares and you could see the highest close for the first four days was here so any close above that would trigger a signal so here's your buy and b right there you would actually buy on and or around i guess i need to say also around the close so so Yesterday, you knew it was probably going to close above here unless it fell apart in the last 10 minutes, right? So sometimes you can get it a little bit early on these. Obviously, if it's an opening gap reversal, maybe you get a head start. I didn't even think about trying to do that with more shares as a head start to buy a B. But then it becomes a little bit more dangerous when you're doing something like that. But it, but it, it can pay off nicely. So I picked up a thousand shares and I was thinking, you know, I don't want to lose anything, but I was thinking I really don't want to lose more than two points. And if it came back in about two points, that'd probably be enough. Although looking at this, it probably really needs about a three point or more stop. And today, just with the market coming unglued and everything going on, I just couldn't look that gift horse in the mouth when I saw I was up two and a half points or so on the trade. So I peeled off 500 shares and I went ahead and put my stop at break even, which is roughly the point where I got in, obviously, and that's that's just the basic money management that we do. Go in and look at the service archives for a plethora of examples on that. <laughs> www.davelander.com slash archives. The reason I laughed is 
somebody recently that I would never think in a million years would use the word plethora I used it and kind of was kind of shocked but anyway and the I got stopped out and remainder for a scratch better than poke the eye right so here's how it all worked out you can see there's the trades got in I wish they had timestamps on here so you could see 1425 which was right around the time I was actually getting out on another account and then this is trade number one of 100. So you can see we're going to do, we're not going to do any hindsight, right? We're going to do actual trade. So there you go, right there, 106.2. So round numbers, 106.0 right here. Scratched out in the remainder, 10 bucks. I consider 10 bucks a scratch. So better than the poker there. One day, one day trade. And by the way, let's back this up a little bit. If you are in a trade and it makes a decent move like this overnight, about 20% or almost 20%, it's it's a bit of a gift horse. And that's one of those things where even though technically I wanted maybe three points or more and I was gonna give it three points or more wiggle room, I just had to take it. And that's that's a little discretion I put in there. And and you know, one I guess one thing that could go both ways with this reporting of trades, it's like uh, what's the the Heisenberg uh, quantum mechanics thing. It's like you try to look at little bitty things and while you're looking at them, you're actually pushing them around. So your observations are creating things. So along those lines, I I do, or I am a little concerned as, as you know, you have to be very cognizant of your psychology in this business, but I am a little concerned the fact that I'm looking to put up numbers to show, hey, here's a hundred trades, check them out, that I might be, possibly doing things just to take the money, okay? And, and you gotta be careful not to eat like a bird and shit like an elephant for the sake of putting numbers on the board. The good news is when things come straight from the trading service, I will follow that plan fairly closely, unless of course we get something like the SST trade that we had a couple of weeks ago, and it just kind of blew up and got halted and did all these crazy things. And I, I applied a little discretion, knock on wood, it worked out fantastic. So. Boy, that that'd have been that have been a fun first trade, you know. <laughs> so anyway, a little bit of experiment here. I think it's going to be uh, fun to do. I know you want to party with me, but that is trade number one. So that's fantastic. So shifting gears. Uh, any questions on the ogres or anything before I, I shift gears? By the way. So someone texted me or actually emailed me and said hey dave didn't we just have a buy signal in the tfm 10 percent system and i'm like yeah and i said i didn't take it but we did have a buy and he's like well i did and i'm like okay well i didn't take it because of the reasons i've been talking about in the trading service in the facebook group and of these presentations in fact if it wasn't for the Facebook group, I probably would have actually overlooked that signal. And I'll show you a couple other things that I was saying. So when you're working with something new, or it's, I know it's been out a couple of years now, now that I think about it, but if you're looking at a new pattern, a new setup or something, make sure you understand the designer's intent. And I'll give you an example of that many, many years ago, I was hired to do some scans, program scans, run scans, and pick stocks based on certain patterns. And I remember when I was in a bit of the learning phase for this gentleman, I showed him a setup and it's like, well, here's a setup. And I thought all I had to do was run some scans and bring them over here, you know, and that wasn't how it worked or fax them over, whatever the case was back in the day. And he said, that's not one of my setups. I'm like, okay, let's take a look at your rules. Let's take a look at the chart. And I walked him through it. And when I got through, he said, well, I don't like it. So it's like, ah, okay. And then over the next weeks to months, he was able to help teach me how to read charts from his perspective, which was a huge boon for me. So I learned what he looks for and it, in the setup might have had some things that i don't like in setups now like gaps against a trend and things like that and that's why i spent so much time on stock selection 14 hours when i did a course on that just on how to pick stocks 
But anyway, the point I'm making here is you can see it was a buy right there, but you really have to squint your eyes. And it, it was a buy because two reasons. One, it was above the buy line, which is 10% below the 50-week high, okay, on a weekly chart. And two, you had Landry Light, two bars of it, bar one above the 50-week moving average. That's really good, right? Nice, nice little close up for the week. Bar two, you really have to squint your eyes to see that, yes, you still had Landry Light's on that bar, but the stock, or I should say, in this case, the market, had already sort of begun to implode and actually sold off from another pattern that I was concerned about, and I'll show you that right now. So this is something that I covered in the stock chart show. Notice that the market obviously rolled over in here, and when we started to retrace back up, my big fear was that we would rally just enough to make everyone think, hey, Water's fine, come on in, and then pff, roll over. And that's exactly what we did. I had no idea it would do that, but that's exactly what it did. So combine this big retrace oversold condition, I'm sorry, overbought condition, with a little bit of overhead supply, and we're only about 3 or 4% away from all-time highs. So it's, I was like, you know what? I think I could sit on my hands a little bit and wait before getting bullish by the way down here this is landry lights lows greater than the moving average in this case one of my favorite moving averages was is the 30 ema so if it's mostly green you know the market's doing well somebody says what good does it do if it's green and red i'm like well it does you a lot of good you know the market is choppy so look in here okay it's it's green it's red it's green it's red it's a little bit of a jackie mason market what you might want to do is wait for maybe 10 or more days of landry lights and then also look at the chart. Okay, so we got almost 10 days here. All right, trends resuming. But wait a minute, we're kind of stuck in this little bit of a range and then we begin to sell off. So the point I want to make is I use a lot of tools and a lot of things in my analysis, but nothing's proprietary. If you come to these shows, I talk about it every week. If you look at the archives of the trading service, you could get that with a little bit of a delay, obviously but you're still getting the same thing, same exact thing that my clients that are paying a premium are, are getting because every day I go in and I say, okay, this is what I think. We're overbought, we've got this big retrace. This could just be a big fake out for everyone. Well, let's just see what happens. It is a trend follower, that's what you do. You spend a lot of time saying, well, let's just see, okay? So that was part of my thinking too. And then I was a little surprised actually when we had that signal now when i came up with the system my thinking was this and i borrowed this term from ian mcactivy he's no longer with us but i'm sure he's looking down upon us and laughing his ass off <laughs> he was my canary in the coal mine he didn't drink a whole lot but he did drink but he smoked like a chimney i was like okay all right i don't smoke but i'm thinking like i do drink and it's like he's my canary in coal mine if he goes i might need to start worrying and damn it <laughs> so Anyway, uh, he's a great guy. I loved him to death and um, fantastic. And I didn't even know uh, he knew who I, was, who I was for a while. We were watching a presentation by him and he said, yeah, like Dave's big blue arrows. You know, I was like, oh, thank you. He, he knows who I am. But um, anyway, good guy. But he used the term diaper change moments to describe these big sell-offs in, in various markets. And so my thinking with the TFM system was, if a market drops 10% or more and drops below its 50-week moving average, then it's in a lot of trouble. And that works for the S&P 500. It may not work for other markets that are a little bit more volatile. Although for S&Gs, I did plot the ARC fund with the TFM 10% system in it, and it triggered a sell signal about 50% ago, I guess about 100% ago, if you do the math on that, because it would have to rally at least 100% to get back to break even. So probably with today's action, it's probably down about 60 or 70% from that signal, which I think is kind of cool. Now, as I just said, it's, it's one tool amongst many to help me time the market. Now, along the lines of the diaper change, I doubt very seriously that I would still be long if I were long the overall market, which is something that I don't always do directly, but I, but I have followed this system for a couple of years, or at least a year, I should say, in some other markets, such as the metals, 
and I will stay long some uh, funds based on that, okay? So I'm, I'm long a metals fund, which should be stopping out soon, and I'm long energy fund, which is kind of back and forth, but with energy's making new highs just yesterday, it's doing okay. So I do definitely use it as a get out point, but it's not necessarily a buy signal. There's a lot of other things, maybe daily bow ties, if the market's at major, major lows, or just brand new highs or whatever. So we're three or 4% away from all time highs. It's like, okay, well, I don't see any a big danger in missing that, that few percent as we make it to new highs, as opposed to jumping in. Now, the thing is, you know, know your guru, so to speak. If if you're gonna follow my stuff, then then learn it. And and uh, how do I say this without getting really frustrated? There was someone who was teaching my stuff, and in one case didn't give me credit, but in other cases I would see him teach my stuff. And he would just get it wrong, just flat out wrong. And and would, the reason I said we're going to get angry is because he gave a speech like two weeks before I was to go give a speech at the same venue and talk about the same thing. And he he talked about he basically he took my stuff and, and gave a presentation on it. But anyway, I digress. And you know me, forget and forget, never. <laughs> Somebody pissed me off twenty years ago. Tweeted me, "Hey, how you doing?" Lee? Block. <laughs> but the point is, get to know the person you're following. Get to know the system. Do do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of tests. I see people all the time. I'll show something the next day. They're like out trading it. It's like no, don't don't do that. You know. Um, and I know I might be guilty, but I'm doing doing it a small way, like with the fifth day ogre and things like that. These are things that I, the ogres are things I'm doing anyway. It have been doing for as long as I can remember. But make sure you are really following along to you, to, so you understand the methodology. And there's little nuances that come out over time, it, but they really come out when you're actually in person. And that's a crazy thing. You you lose so much by not being in person. I miss. The being in person thing it's like i got asked to present to china and it's, of course it's gonna be a webinar now it's like damn you know it's so much better when you can be there and little things come out which occasionally come out in, in these webinars don't get me wrong but like little things like the bow tie is not designed to be used to buy when a market is near a top right it's it's more for when a market is near a bottom and little nuances like that come out but anyway if you're following someone else just make sure you understand their whole library of work where they're coming from what they're doing hey with me it's pretty simple believe me and oh by the way as i said a thousand times one story i did pick up in one of those silly turtle books curtis facebook is pretty good so read Tur curtis face book uh i was kind of anti those turtle books because covell came out with one years ago and i kind of felt like he was capitalizing on their uh you know uh, whatever coattails and being famous and I was like well you know the book's pretty good and all that after I read it and then I realized that he's actually um, a lot of the things I think he, he owns like turtletrader.com or something like that it's like well you're not a turtle you know so I don't know it's kind of like the guy selling my stuff somewhere you know it's a little frustrating and that's happened a few times throughout my career but anyway I digress the point I was trying to get to believe it or not in in the Covell book which is worth a read, okay? So let me give him a bit of a plug. I don't want to beat him up too bad. But one of the things that happened was, and I think I said this last week, so let me just get through it as quickly as possible. They gave the turtles a mechanical system and they wanted them to follow it, good, bad, and indifferent. And in one particular case, there was a cocoa trade and all of the turtles got slaughtered on this cocoa trade. If you ever traded cocoa, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> I don't think I've ever made a dime, at least longer term in cocoa. Maybe one day you feel it pretty good, but it could be a tough market to trade. Anyway, long story, unless I know too late. The traders that got their ass handed to them by taking the signal didn't get into any trouble for that. And that's kind of the that Eckert and Dennis was trying to teach these people, look, you need to follow the signals 
and I think that's part of their weeding process. If if you couldn't follow the signals, then you get kicked out of the program. So everybody had this disastrous trade in cocoa, except for one guy. He didn't take the trade. It's like, well, why didn't you take the trade? And he says, well, I do my analysis. When I get to, I find that trades, if it takes me three pages of analysis to work through everything and figure out what markets I want to trade, and I can't find any markets to trade, I just don't take the trade. And here is Coco on this page. And, and I'm not sure they fully bought the, his answer, but I think he showed in many cases where he didn't take other trades based on his analysis of what he kind of figured out. And he might have been onto something, who knows? I, one thing that I kind of want to noodle with, of course, today wouldn't have been the day to do it, but one thing I kind of want to noodle with, kind of get my life back because I'm doing too much intraday trading, is that, you know, what, ha what would happen if you only waited to the last hour, maybe even the last half hour to hop on some of these trends? And a day like yesterday, if I'd have taken the morning off, especially on a Fed day and, um, and waited for like the last hour of trading, I would have absolutely printed money. I did really well, don't get me wrong, but the morning trades, I had to, you know, wash those, to wash away those cents first. So if you're, if you like this system and you say, you know what, I'm going to follow it mechanically, I'm not going to put any discretion on it because I don't want to get in trouble with it, then taking the signal was the thing to do, okay? The fact that I didn't take the signal, so to speak, don't let that sway you if you like the system. If you're following me, then it's like, okay, well, yeah, it's a signal, but again, the market's coming back in. This is looking pretty ugly. It looks like it's going to come back right back in, and it looks like a whipsaw in the worst. And what's the worst thing can happen? Okay, well, let's just say, let's get in up here. If it closes next week up here, and we still have a little Landry light, then by all means, let's take that second signal and go from there and be willing to forego just a little bit of, Price. I mean, so what if you're in at 4,600 instead of around 4,500, right? That's no big deal. I don't even know what that is percentage-wise. That's 1%? Uh, maybe a little more than that. Anyway, I can't do that on the fly. But it's not that much. You're not giving up that much. But anyway, we immediately had a sell two weeks later. So technically, that was a whipsaw, and I don't know if I put it in a spreadsheet yet. But I will put it in a spreadsheet and track things completely mechanically in the spreadsheet, of course. But we're back to the downside again. And even if you took that signal, well, you got a little bit of a whipsaw, so what, okay? You get back in the short side. Whipsaws are frustrating. Bear markets are devastating. That's a Greg Morris quote. You can survive frustration. But losing half your money every now and then, that's a little bit tougher. So anyway, you can see we closed back below the 50-week moving average and back below the buy line, which is 10% away from the 50-week closing high. So whatever this number is here, take 90% of that or subtract 10% of that, however you want to look at it, and that gives you the buy line. Now, this is plotted in the ACP platform for what it's worth, but you could actually program this into other places. And I, I have done so before I had the... Um, this cool little ACP platform to work with. All right. Last week, I started talking a little bit about route days and how they're the holy grail for intraday trading. And route day is when a market just goes in one direction and doesn't look back. In this case, I've plotted in two bar lows and two bar highs. And you can see that's the spiders and then the JDAS, which is inverted gold shares, the, the 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 crappy gold stocks. What do you call those? The the minor gold stocks or whatever. It's kind of volatile, but it can really trend at times. And trading these commodity-related areas like JNUG, JDust, and and Gush and Drip, sometimes it can be a love-hate relationship. Especially Gush and Drip could be really a, a fish. But JNUS and JDUG can trend fairly well at times. But anyway, you can see we've had some nice moves higher, and that's what I call a route, or that's what's called a route. And if we hop just real quick into, if we hop over to, let me just set it up real quick. I should have it ready to go. If we hop over to ACP, here it is, then we could take a look at 
today's action and yesterday's action. And let's get there. Here we go. All right. Anyway, so we take a look at what happened today. Today was a beautiful route. Okay. We had a little bit of a lap lower. And we dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped. Well, let's go back one day just real quick. We had all this BS morning trading, right? You know, just chopping around in the fourth. And then finally the market took off after quite a few gyrations, right? So this was, I did get sucked in here a little bit. And I think that's what kind of killed my profits in the futures before, for the day until I finally caught the move out. And that was a little frustrating. And I should have just waited and waited, waited until it was a very solid direction one way or the other. Well, what did I have, what I've been saying lately and always say, borrowing from Linda Rasky, who got it off the floor or whatever, the market will do what it has to do to frustrate the most amount of people. And it'll do the most obvious thing in the most unobvious manner. And in this case, it did what it had to do to frustrate the most. Sometimes it'll do both at once. But it was a nice little trend higher in the afternoon. And if you take a look at the Sox S, so Sox L would have been your play there. Nice little trend lower in the afternoon, pretty much a route there. Uh, you had a route in J Dust, but it did make a little bit of a crazy move first, like the P's. Anyway, if you take a look at today's action, notice that the P's had a little bit of a lap lower and they didn't make a two bar high until I think it was this bar here. And I think I got stopped out before that. Reason I got stopped out was I was using a 30 point. I just took a probe trade and the market began to implode. And it's like, yeah, it always seems to happen. You never have enough shares on when the market really, really makes a big, big move. In the in the E minis, because it's such a noisy market, usually I'll just take a little stab at it first before putting on a full position, unless I feel really good about the market. And and these other things that I occasionally trade or off the trade, I should say, like Lab D, Lab U, Sox S, Sox L, Drip Gush, and J Dust, J Nog. Oh, the junior gold miners right there. That's what I was trying to think of. The crappy gold stocks. <laughs> anyway, uh, I tend to take full positions and I, I tend to be a little bit more committed on those things. But you can see today's action, Lab D. Lab D was a beautiful day for Lab D. Look at this. There's your two bar low coming out the gate. These are 50 minute charts, okay? And just follow it higher and notice that you didn't make a two bar low until right there, okay? So pretty good run, about three points. That's a big move in, in Lab D before you had a two bar low. Depends on where your stop was. If you had lots of wiggle room, I did get out, get out and then get back in on this one. But you can see that it sort of made a route higher and then kind of died out at the end of the day. So this is a trader's dream, these route days. If you could only trade on route days, like today, it's like, okay, it's unfolding. I feel it. It doesn't look good. This thing is not stopping. We are on a route day. So other than that, I don't know of any other way to know if you're going to have a route day or not. But I think that's a good, that's a good start. Some other things that I've done and talked about doing is and I don't have the exact formula in my head. I think it's um, today's high minus the low, and that would all be in parentheses, divided by the 10-day, divided by yesterday's 10-day average true range. And that gives you the percentage of how far that, that market has moved today, okay? And as a general statement, if it's less than 50% of that range, because it's still a narrow range, especially as like I said, if it's an inside bar. Day like today, though, everything's an inside bar. So a little tricky at the wide range bar. But I like to see at least 50% move, and then it can still move. If it's going to be a route day, then it can move 100% or more and make that nice wide range bar. So still working on this quite a bit to try to keep me out of, out of trouble. And it's funny, you know, it's like when you're newer to trading, you're constantly looking for more ways to trade. And as you get a little bit more experience, then what you do is you look for ways to not trade. And, and that could be a holy grail hunt in and of itself, believe me. But if you can find ways to avoid 
bad trades, the more bad trades you can avoid by not chasing your tail and it's chopping around. They're just simple things like, for instance, if you're trading, okay, let's say you're trading those ETFs like we just talked about, and you're getting excited about jumping in on one, we'll put a stop order in just above where the market is trading. And if it gets hit, then you're in, which it likely will if it's really moving. But sometimes you'd be surprised how many times you jump in at the market and it immediately reverses on you. Now, the tricky part to that is, and, and trading, there's no execs, right? Tricky part to that is if you get into a serious, serious, serious route, it's going to be hard to use that stop order because by the time you get that stop order in, the market's already here. And that happened to me a few times today. It's like I'll put the order in. It's like it, it would it kick it back out because the market is already higher. So what I'm saying is you got a market that's going straight up, okay, and you're like, okay, well, let me put a stop order here. And by the time you get your order in, it, it goes up. So sometimes you do have to go in at the market. Okay, we'll jump into crypto real quick. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time here just because crypto is in a bear market. And as I'll show you in just a couple of minutes, the stock market today was a liquidation market big time. And that'll make a lot more sense in a few minutes. So in crypto, if we take a look at the strongest pairs, and you don't want to buy something that's bouncing off of lows like this. But if you're looking for the strength, and believe me, we're not going to find much tonight. There was one earlier I was looking at a little bit. But you need to at least make sure the pair, this is the one I was looking at, make sure you're above the 30 EMA. And this has been a beautiful trend, as you can see. But there's not a whole lot like this. So I haven't been spending a whole lot of time on crypto. There's so much else that's going on everywhere else that I've been putting my focus there. And I, I just keep kind of a loose eye on what's going on. And if it's only one pair out of a thousand that's taken off and I miss it, like that one earlier, which it might've been too thin anyway. I was looking at it earlier. It looked pretty thin. So uh, no regrets on that. But anyway, you could see most of these are below the 30 EMA. As I preach ad nauseum, the 30 EMA is your best friend. Don't even think about buying a crypto pair if it's below its 30 day EMA. You are welcome. And that pretty much applies to nearly every market I've seen. There's only a few cases where I've seen some deep pullbacks setting up in stocks where getting in, even though you're below the 30 EMA, would work. But for the most part, especially if you do error to trading, never buy a market below the 30 EMA. And you're welcome. You're, you're absolutely welcome. And if you don't believe me, and say, just watch. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet the next 100 trades on the long side will be uh, above the 30 EMA. So anyway, you can see this is this is sorted by strongest, okay? And this is how crappy they look. Let's just take a look at the big boys real quick, and then we'll pop out to stocks. Start uh, punching your uh, symbols in if you want me to look at something. I think I still have a position in this one. I don't know where my stop is. It's something I probably need to pay attention to. But I am still profitable and I have taken partial profits in this one. This is Gary, whatever the freak that is. Take a look at Bitcoin. Look at that. Got decimated today. What's that? 10% today. Look at that. Wow. 8%. That's huge. I feel like tiny Elvis. So should we buy Bitcoin? No, <laughs> because it's below the 30 EMA. Okay. So Bitcoin not looking so hot in here. And this is a bit of a bummer. I think everybody was hoping, or I should say the Bitcoin aficionados, if that's the correct word. I think they were hoping that when the whole world starts coming unglued, sort of like we are now, <laughs> and stocks begin to come unglued, that Bitcoin would be a flight to safety. Well, so far, not so good. And by the way, I am a bit of a champion. I listen to some Michael Saylor videos, of course. It gets me all pumped up and I want to buy Bitcoin. But I am kind of a champion of Bitcoin, and I do think it's viable. The other crypto, eh, the shit coin, so to speak, S-H-Y-T. I don't know, but I'll, I'll, I'll trade the hell out of them if they're moving higher. And I haven't done too good shorting them, but you can short them. It's a little bit more complex. More complex than I want to get into, but it can it can be done. But anyway, long story endless. 
with the crypto, I am kind of bullish on Bitcoin. I do have a, a tiny hodl position here, and I do have a little GBTC that I'm hodling. But whenever you hodl something, okay, hold on for dear life, remember that all asset classes will lose half of their value. And I forget who said this, but it's very much true at some point in your lifetime, okay? Oh, I've been looking for this. Okay, so I'm gonna need to go back. These are the colors I used to use. I need to go back to that. Anyway, you can see where was Bitcoin? Was that uh, what 65,000? It went down to what 22,000? What's that? About an 80% drop? Okay. <laughs> and then it went from 70,000 down to 35. That's a 50% drop. So you know, pick an asset, throw a dart at an asset, and I bet you a thousand percent. I bet you 100 percent. I bet you a thousand dollars. At some point, it lost over half of its value. Not every single stock, don't do that to me, but like an index or gold or Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> How does he get a pass? How do you lose 50% of your fund's value? And it's like this ARC thing, you know? How do you lose 80% of your fund's value and still have a job? That's That's just kind of baffling to me. Maybe I'm just jealous. <laughs> I have a bad week and all my clients leave. You know, it's like, what up? What up with that? That's a job that I want. All right. Let's uh, shift gears here and get into stocks. So if you have any stocks, I know we talk about stocks all day and, and Facebook, and most of you guys are in Facebook, so we don't get as many picks as we used to. But if there's anything that... I haven't commented on, or the other guys haven't commented on, feel free to punch it in now. All right, S&P 500 got whacked. As I just said, my big fear was that we'd rally up just enough to get everybody feeling good. And I have to admit, right here, I'm thinking, you know what? This market might just make it back to old highs. But I was in a bit of a show me mode. And the other thing is, because my methodology requires a pullback, I wasn't seeing a whole lot of setups just yet. And then the pullback, if you're looking at this as a leg higher, the pullback just imploded, so it's like, whew, thank God I didn't go out and buy a whole bunch of more stocks. Anyway, obviously we imploded today, and last in a little while ago, in the week, the, the trading service, I said I misspoke, and then I corrected myself. I thought we were at one year plus lows, but we're actually just off of one year plus lows. So that would be a couple of days ago. We're at one year plus lows, but if you take, take today's close and go back in time. You know, I like to draw a line as far back as I can and say, okay, Rip Van Winkle sleep test. You can go back to April of 2021. Okay, let's say you bought stocks in April 2021. April 15th, you know, your, your tax bill wasn't as bad as you thought. Oh, I'm going to put uh, 100 grand in the stocks. Let me see how I'm doing those 100, that 100 grand. Like, oh, well, it did nothing over that period of time. By the way, one thing I was talking about, which I think is is pretty cool, and, and, and it's probably not original thought. Whenever I come up with something really cool, I start talking about it. <laughs> and then a month or two or a year or 10 years later, I, found out, I find out, I read a book from like 40 years ago. I'm like, wait a minute, this guy was talking about the same thing. But technical analysis, as I was saying in the stock chart show and trading simplified show, is not mumble jumbo, at least the way I do it, okay? It's not accounting methodology or something, which I do not believe in, or something arcane. It's just performance-based investing, okay? So when this market begins to drop, you might want to get out because who knows? It could go all the way back down to these lows, okay? It, it could lose half of its value. It, spelled a silent SH. I've already demonetized the video. I guess it doesn't matter. Shit happens, right? NASDAQ Composite, speaking of shit happening, close, it did close today at those lows, at brand new lows, one year plus lows. You go all the way back to December of 2020, and and that that should have you concerned. And as I, I'm kind of just reiterating my show I did yesterday, but like one of my buddies said, you know, I told him on the first sell signal, talk you guys like I did. We're getting more aggressive. I was like, oh, that's great, you know, <laughs> whatever. The buy and hope guys, they drink the Kool Aid, you know, and if the market goes down, it's it's, it's on sale. It's like, no, some guy's installing fiber here and he's pitching fiber to us because he just put fiber through the neighborhood. He, you know, door to door salesman. And uh, he walks him off, those red bars, what's that? It's like, oh, it's going down. Oh, so you should buy? 
I'm like, no. And I showed him my tat on my arm. And anyway, so my buddy, when it started selling off again, he started getting a little nervous. And I said, hey, you might want to talk to your guy again. I got another sell sir. And he says, well, what's the worst going to happen? I said, well, you lose half your money and it takes 25 years to get it back. And look at the layman's guide to trading stocks. I gave a friend of mine my only copy that I had. I said, just read the first chapter of this book. And I gave it to him three months ago or two months ago, long before we got, we got into this mess here when the market first started getting iffy. And he still hasn't gotten around to reading it. And, and that's one thing that amazes me. And, and again, tonight's the night of digressing. But people will spend so much time on hobbies and watching TV. And, you know, what's the. Um, some of the motivational speakers will say like, uh, okay, who in here doesn't have enough time? Everybody raise their hand. You know, it's like, okay, who in here? I think they asked them first. So who in here watched Game of Thrones? And nearly everybody raised their hands and they're like, okay, well, who in here feels like they don't have enough time to get everything done? And everybody raised their hands. Like, okay, well, you had 146 hours or whatever it was to watch Game of Thrones, <laughs> you know? And my point is not that you you shouldn't have fun. Believe me, I'm a big fan of fun. But my point is that you should invest a little bit in yourself. This is your retirement. This is your life. Understand how markets really work. Understand what's the worst that could happen. Understand that whipsaws are frustrating and bear markets are devastating. Sam says, that's a problem. You gave it to him for nothing. He didn't see the value. Charge him $100 for it, and he would have read it. Yeah, and you know what? That's you, you You got a good point. And not to come back to the last week at Van Camp, but that's the thing in the Facebook group is that everybody's qualified there. They have a little skin in the game. And I think that makes for a better group. You're right. It's worth what you pay for is what people see. All right, let's take a look real quick at the energies and other sectors. Yesterday, yesterday was pretty good, huh? I guess tomorrow we could say yesterday was playing awful. So energies made all-time highs yesterday. That's pretty cool, right? They looked a little iffy in here. Look at the net net, you know, net net losing a little steam, right? But then they blasted right back higher. Today, off the worst levels, but still kind of an ugly day nonetheless but they're okay longer term i sure would like to see them bang on new highs and not look back for a while metals and mining are a little bit different story i don't know if i can get a on the fly if i can get a bow tie to work i used to have these things programmed so i got to get around to fixing all that here we go metals and mining and we're on a weekly okay Weekly, by the way, just by accident, weekly doesn't look horrible. It doesn't look fantastic, but it doesn't look horrible. But on a daily chart, you can see we did bow tie to the downside. I guess technically that bow tie would have probably happened, would have triggered today in that sell signal, okay? So that's a little bit of concern. I'm not crazy bearish on metals just yet, but I'm beginning to become a little bit concerned about that. And the reason I'm not crazy bearish is metals can, can be a key word, trade contra to the overall market. But as I hinted at earlier, today we saw gold go down. We saw bonds go down. We obviously saw Bitcoin go down. So this was a liquidation market. When everything gets thrown out, people need to raise money for whatever reason. That means People are delever deleveraging. That could be a hedge fund that has to deleverage before they get forced out. And that's when it gets really ugly if they start blowing up. Anyway, banks selling off hard. You can see rollover remains intact there. Massive top in place there. Financials not doing so hot in here. Hit hard, downtrend, choppy downtrend, but downtrend nonetheless. Insurance is beginning to crack from high levels. Real estate, which was one of those areas that was trying to hang in there, is rolled back over. Let's take a look at drugs. Drugs made it all the way back to brand new highs, began to pull back, and then look at that, began to implode. So here's the thing about waiting for an entry. I didn't see any drug stocks that I know of trigger during this period, and that in and of itself, buying on strength, not weakness, will keep you out of a lot of trouble. Biotechnology, new multi-year closing low. Today, looking pretty ugly in there. Actually, once again, I'm wrong. Slightly above a new closing low, but certainly 
remaining in a downtrend. Health services whacked in here, as you can see, recently torpedoed. Retail was kind of interesting because retail was really hanging in there for a while, but with today's action down 5% almost, you can see it like many other areas at multi-year lows, so not looking too good. Now, this doesn't mean that the market can't bounce from these levels. We could have the mother of all oversold rallies tomorrow. I hope we do, and I hope I'm here for it. Got a conference call half an hour after the open with China, so hopefully <laughs> that doesn't go, uh, that goes quickly. But anyway, we could see, we could, certainly could see a big bounce tomorrow. And what I'm hinting at here is other than a possible intraday trade, don't rush out and position trade and buy a whole bunch of stocks tomorrow just because they're bouncing, if they do bounce. Semiconductor selling off pretty hard. Oh, that was software, software, brand new, multi-year low. Software has been in a serious downtrend. It's been a little cleaner than the rest. Thrust, pullback, thrust, pullback, thrust, kind of a big pullback and now a big thrust lower. But that's looking ugly, go all the way back to 2021 on that one one year plus. Semiconductors got whacked a little bit today, down about over four and a half percent, just off of those lows, remaining in a downtrend. And a lot of these areas just don't have a lot of support, okay? And so next uh, next target, semiconductors, 3,000. You know, uh, this, we could be in the halving process now. I hope not, but, you know, hope in one hand, and I guess I can't say that, but you know the you know the rest. The utilities were doing pretty good in here, but now they too are beginning to roll over. So we've got a first thrust down utilities. That's a toppy pattern there. We might short some. Dollar actually ended a little higher today. I'm a little nervous. If this, if this dollar begins to tumble, we could be in a lot of trouble. Now keep in mind that, as somebody pointed out last week, which or a week before, this doesn't mean how much your dollar can buy. This is just a dollar relative to other currencies. So the way I look at it is we are the dog with lease fleas when it comes to the dollar. All right, any individual stocks you guys want to look at? Anything unanswered? Love you too, man. Oh, thank you, John. Yeah, you know, I say this over and over and over again. It's like, as my wife said, Facebook group, best thing I've ever done. It's good to have some camaraderie and yeah, it's a lonely sport. Sometimes you're like, hey, is it just me? And it's good to see other people, you know, trials and tribulations happening too. And then you guys pick up a lot of stuff. Sometimes I might overlook, you know, maybe maybe John or whoever was talking about these, uh, John R in the group talks a lot about IPOs, but some of the other guys were chiming in too. It's like, that's got me really, had me really looking at IPOs again, whereas I was so busy with everything else, I wasn't paying as much attention to IPOs. and there's been a few that have taken off lately. So who's to say? I mean, you know, what would the world be without hypothetical questions? Uh, said Mr. Wright with a W. But who's who's to say that I might not have taken that that um, SOUN trade, okay? Which was a nice little trade for the week. Helping my week uh, out a little bit. Helping to mitigate some of the other stuff. All right, uh, going once. Any questions? Any stocks? Going twice. Well, as usual, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you want to join us again next week or in sign up and you're good for forever, DaveLander.com slash webinar. You just have to sign up once. Everyone have a great weekend if we will talk between now and then. And may the trend be with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for your hard work, Dave. You're welcome. <laughs> Pretty quiet on IPO front lately. Have a good one. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, we'll keep an eye on it. You know, that's the thing is when you stop doing your homework, just throw in something really quick. But I'm seeing a few people do that. Like, oh, I'm not going to bother doing my scans. I'm not going to do my homework. It's like, you know what? Sometimes that's when your best setups come is right when you kind of give up on everything. And that's, again, the mar market doing the perverse thing to frustrate the most amount of people. <laughs> anyway, my time is up. Everybody have a great night and may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.